These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. Let's draw the mechanism and the product here. Good. Looks like you've already got the basics. So you drew a good uh, mechanism here. This arrow means, well, now when we were talking about aldehydes and ketones, I recommended using some labels to keep track of the key atoms. Asterisks for the carbonyl carbon and oxygen and alpha for the alpha carbon. So I would recommend some labels here as well. I recommend putting asterisks in these two carbons in this part of the diels alder and then maybe we could label these two with dots. Uh, as long as we remember these don't mean radicals. There's no radicals in diels alder These are just dots for labels. So I would put dots here and stars here. Well, then this arrow means that uh, the starred atom is making a sigma bond to the dotted atom. This pi bond is gone. Then we're making a sigma bond between the dotted atom and the starred atom. And this pi bond, uh, pi bond is gone. And there's a new pi bond over here. So it helps to put in the stars and the dots to see where were the bonds that were formed. So the bonds were formed between the starred atoms and the dotted atoms. And it's good that you drew the arrows correctly. Uh, all the tails here should be in the middles of the bonds, because these are all moving pi bonds. But here the head should be on the atom because it's making a sigma bond. Here the head should be on the atom because it's making a sigma bond. And here the head should be on the bond because it's making a pi bond. So you guys got that right. Most students get that wrong. So it's good that you do the arrows exactly right. What's the name of this reaction? Diels alder. Now this is a type of what's called cycloaddition. This is a type of cycloaddition. That name makes sense. You can see that it involves making a cycle. And it does involve addition in the sense that we're removing some of the pi bonds here. So this is a type of cycloaddition. Now we need a name for the two molecules that are participating here. Do you guys remember what the name is for this molecule? Diene. One, three, diene. Yeah. It's a diene. That's a very logical name. The ene stands for alkene, and there's two alkenes here. It's got to be single, double. Sorry, it's got to be double, single, double. And then we need a name for this participant as well. Dienophile. Yeah, that's the dienophile. That means dying lover. This is, or lighter to be less dramatic. So this molecule over here wants to react with this dying over here. It likes or loves to react with it. Now what's the basic type of product from Diels alder? Cyclohexane. So when do you need to use a Diels alder reaction in a synthesis? Well, if you're trying to make a cyclohexane ring. But even if you were just trying to make a cyclohexane ring, you could still use the diels alder because what could we do this now? H2 PDC. Yeah, we could do a hydrogenation to make this into cyclohexane. So if you're trying to make cyclohexane or cyclohexene on the next test, there's a good chance that you'd want to use diels alder to do that. This is a concerted reaction. All these things are happening at one time. In your class, did you talk about the ideas of S cis and S trans? Um. Don't think so? All right, maybe we won't spend too much time on that then. But do you see that these two 
two molecules look different, but they're really kind of the same thing. They're both uh, butadienes, right? 1,3-butadienes. The only difference is that here the double bonds are pointing in opposite directions, and here they're pointing in the same directions. Uh, but that doesn't make too much difference because we know there's relatively free rotation around a single bond. So it's not too difficult for this molecule to rotate to look like this. Well, the name for this is S-trans. And the name for this confirmation is S-cis. Oh, I think we did talk about this, actually. Yeah, it's a pretty standard topic. Although they don't talk about too much of it in the book, but it's a pretty standard topic for the deals alder. Now we can see why this is called S-trans and S-cis. Now it's not normal trans or normal cis. Here would be a normal trans. And here would be a normal cis. Normal cis and trans is when you have different arrangements around a double bond. But here we have different arrangements of the double bonds around a single bond. That's what the S here stands for. It stands for single bond. S trans stands for single bond trans. So in this case, the double bonds are pointing in opposite directions around the single bond. And in S cis, the double bonds are pointing in the same direction around the single bond. So it's important to be clear that's different from the normal cis and trans we learned about last term. This is different arrangements around a double bond. Now, is it easy for a trans molecule to rotate to form a cis conformation? There's no free rotation here. There's no free rotation around double bonds. So these should really be considered two different molecules. These are two different molecules. But is it easy for us to rotate around the single bond? Well, relatively easy. So these are, should really be just considered different conformations of the same thing. These are really the same molecule. That's why we never even learned these names before, because these are just different names for this, uh, the same molecule. It's like, here's a picture of me. And here's another picture of me. Right? Here's one picture where I'm holding my hand up, and here's one picture where I'm holding my hand down. But there's, those are still both pictures of me. So uh, it's still the same person in both cases. Well, these are the same molecule in both cases, just holding their hands in different directions. Whereas these really should be considered different molecules. OK. So um, the different arrangements around a, of a diene around a single bond are called S cis and S trans. Now, the important thing is only one of these conformations could do a Diels-Alder reaction. Which conformation do we need for Diels-Alder? S-cis. Yeah, we need the S-cis for the Diels-Alder reaction. However, you can see that we already have the S-cis over here. Now, in most cases, that's not a big issue, because even if the molecule was originally drawn as an S-trans, you know it can rotate to form an S-cis. So this is something you might see on, the, on an exam. I, I don't know about your instructor, but some instructors like this trick a lot. Of, um, drawing the S-trans, well, what, what would you do if you were given the S-trans? The first thing you should do is redraw it as S-cis. That's legal because there's pretty easy rotation around this single bond. So if you do happen to see an S-trans diene, if you wanted to do a deals order, just rotate it around to make it look like the S-cis. Now, there might be some cases where you can't do this. For example, if this was part of a ring, there might not be a way to rotate it. We've seen in the past that rings impose rigidity. So that's something else that might be tested. If the double bonds are part of a ring in such a way that they're frozen in the S-trans, then you really can't do the deals alder. That's a little bit rare, but that's something I've seen as well. So if the double bonds are frozen in a ring, frozen in an S-trans position, then you just can't do the deals alder. In most cases, though, if you're given an S-trans, um, it won't be in a ring, and then you should just redraw it as the S-cis, and then you can do the deals alder. Now, which of these molecules should we think of as the nucleophile, and which should we think of as the electrophile? Diene. Is the... Nucleophile. That's right. That's good. Now, if you think about it, it's a little hard to understand why you should think about it that way, because both molecules are both receiving and donating electrons. After all, the diene here is both donating electrons and receiving electrons, so it would be hard to figure out from scratch that you should consider this the nucleophile. Uh, in a way, you just have to have it memorized. You have to memorize that this, is the uh, that this acts like the nucleophile and that this acts like the electrophile. We can kind of give an explanation for it here. Who's participating in the Diels-Alder reaction? It's the pi electrons. It's the pi electrons that are participating in this Diels-Alder reaction. Well, how many pi electrons are participating from the diene? Four. Four. Two here and two here. And how many pi electrons are participating from the dienophile? Two. So which of these is more electron rich 
in a sense. Well, in a sense, this is more electron rich in the pi electrons, and we would normally think of a thing that's electron rich as acting like the nucleophiles. That gives us a bit of an explanation for why we would think of this as more, the, as more playing the nucleophilic role, even though it's both donating and receiving electrons. This is more electron rich in the pi electrons that are participating. So it kind of makes sense to think of it as the nucleophile. But we also maybe just have to have that memorized as the right way to think about this.